Hello, hello. Welcome to this video. This is what we're doing today. There's lots of freehand, lots of bling, lots of glitter. It's adorable. If you are new here, welcome. Please take the time to like and don't forget to subscribe. Right. So today's inspiration has for this set has actually come from a product on our website that I'm obsessed with. I'll put a picture up now. And I saw this and I was like, oh my God, I need to do a nail thing. And this was weeks ago. I was like, I need to do this. And I just hadn't got around to doing it. It's the pastel with the cutesy Halloween-y, but not too Halloween-y. It's cutesy. It's magical. And also I got into the 4D gel that one of my students gave me about three years ago and I finally got it and used it. I've had it in my drawer and I kept saying to her, I will use it, I will use it. And then I got it out, I used it. I may or may not have made a pink pumpkin because pink rules uh, for this occasion. So I've got my Eliana hand. I'm gonna use a base coat, which is called Bring My Latte. And that is from the brand new Madame Glam Labour Luxe Collection. Yes, I know I've pulled the tips down. This hand is very expensive. It's like a 300 pound practice hand. So I'm just, I'm making it easy for myself really. I'm being lazy, but I've pulled the tips down. Um, obviously if you're practicing, to become a nail tech or you want to work your skills then push the tips up but uh I'm, I'm i can paint around a cuticle i'm just want ease and speed because this is a long video and i had to have lots of breaks for my body but my god i'm in love with this set and how it's turned out i'm doing two coats of this it's one minute cure per coat um it's a stunning nude i mean i think i've used it as my nude on every gel set i've done recently i think i have and i may continue to do so because it's it's beautiful it's like my new favorite i haven't tried it on my skin tone yet but i think it will go fine um the hand i'm using is an eliana practice hand it's the anais hand and i can't remember what shade it's in i'll have a look at my box right now and let you know so i've done two coats um and then i'm going to do a layer of velvet matte top coat because I'm gonna paint on top of it and I want the perfect um, surface to paint on. So it's winter, is it winter? Yes, it's the Anais Hand Posable Winter. There we go. Um, I have filed to sharpen the shape because um, I want these like really sharp and I'm gonna just wipe off with isopropyl alcohol and then slide it to back up honey. Um, oh God, lint-free wipes, but bits were coming off. How frustrating. Anyway, uh, the pink I'm using is 50 shades of pink. Um, this collection was quite a long time ago, but I love this pink. It's really, really gorgeous. And I was trying to color match the candle, um, which, um, yeah, stunning. I can't get over it. There's so many things um, on our website that make me want to do nail art, which is nice, isn't it? To get inspiration from other places. I've also had inspiration from other people. So I've been watching like a lot of Zule nails because she's just so talented. And I saw one of her videos from a few weeks ago and I was like, oh man, I want to do something like that, but I want to recreate it for Halloween. So there's a lot coming. I got a list. Your girl's got a list. Right. Two coats of this on the ring finger, only one coat on the middle finger, because I'm doing something different. Um, I've got to remember what I did. <laughs> yeah, two coats on this finger, uh, cured it for a minute. Although I think this gel might have been a 30 second cure, but it, I was just set for a minute. So that's what I did. Um, and then I will go over this ring finger with velvet matte top coat again. Um, because it just gives you the perfect painting surface uh, to do like your freehand stuff, which I've done a lot of in this set. I've had to speed it right up because this video was hella long, like you would have been falling asleep and that's no good. No one wants to fall asleep watching a video. Um, this glitter I'm using is Purple Haze from Smiley's Glitter Store. It is stunning. It's been my favorite for years. It's been in my top 10 for years. Um, and I'm going to mix it with some base coat and then I'm going to go over the, I'll use the application brush from Madame Glam and go over the middle fingernail and just create a kind of layer 
of glitter. Now, um, because it is a loose glitter and I've mixed it into a gel and I'm not an expert, it was a little bit bumpy. And that's just because, you know, my ratio was a bit too glittery, I expect. So what I had to do was I went in with one coat, then I cured it. Then I went in with another coat because I wanted more glitter because who doesn't? Um, but I just tippy tapped it and kind of added a bit more here and there. And then afterwards I did uh, a couple of thin coats of velvet matte top coat, but I wasn't happy with the surface because where I'd added glitter, raw glitter, essentially, um, it was a bit lumpy bumpy. So I decided, this is me adding the velvet matte top coat, first coat. Um, and I just thought to myself, well, I know my glitter ratio was off um, because it's not a pre-mixed. So I decided that I wasn't happy with the way it felt because uh, I was considering doing freehand on this nail initially. So I went in with the Madame Glam Soak Off Builder Gel in clear just to cap it. I needed to encapsulate it. I started here and then I was like, girl, you need to pull that tip down. We end about messing up this expensive hand. So um, I'm going to encapsulate just with a thin layer of the builder gel because I know it will self level. I know I can rely on it to leave a crystal clear finish as well with no bubbles or anything. So that's what I did. I'm just working from left to right like a wood with a builder gel, nothing new. Um, and I think I cured it for a minute. I'm not sure. Um, because I did this set over a couple of sittings, basically because of life. So, and, and needing rest. Some of the time I needed a rest because I was like, oh, my joints are hurting. So I was like, get up, move around. And then other times it was just life things that I had to do. Um, so yes, just like literally left to right, left to right, all the way down the nail. And um, is it too soon for Halloween nails, by the way? I don't think it is. I think I'm gradually, it's not like I'm doing blood and guts. Like we're gradually ascending into Halloweeny type nails, but I will still do autumn because that's my favorite season. It's just like these are cutesy, right? And I had to do it. Um, <sighs> so I'm just leveling out the nail surface now. There we go. There we are. Okay, I'll get that in the lamp for a cure and then I will file and buff, obviously, because yes, we need to make sure we keep our shape nice and snatched. So I'm going to remove the tacky layer. There we go. And funnily enough, I will push the nail back up to file because I want my shape to be right. Um, so I want to get it snatched. I want to get it gorgeous. And then uh, buff over the surface as well. So I do my sidewall, sidewall. Obviously, there's not much of a free edge here because it's a, a stiletto. So I'm going to turn my file flat and buff the surface of the nail, rotating, like twisting left to right, left to right. And then I'll go around the cuticle. I tend to have a diff slightly different filing routine for different shapes, but I will do the same on every nail, if that makes sense, because you need your nails to look the same. Um, so then I'll go around my cuticle area, like so. And then you, it's easy when you're buffing like um, gel or acrylic to see if you've got any high points because they will file first and then the low points will still remain. So you can even out the shape quite nicely. The dust is uh, your friend in this instance. Um, then I'm going to remove, obviously, the dust because it's no longer my friend. And I'm going to buff the nail surface and then de-dust it again. And then use isopropyl alcohol to clean it all off okie dokie little bufferoo and then we'll get rid of that uh, dust we will eradicate it um using my unicorn dusty brush on the outside now i'm happy i'm happy i'm a happy lady right yes look double check nice clean on everything don't want to work on a dusty surface you are setting yourself up for failure there we go so my plan here 
is to use the pink shade that I've used on the ring finger and as the base on the middle finger as a French on the pinky and the index. That's 50 shades of pink, I believe. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm on top form. Um, so I'm going to do a French. I've already done it on the pinky as if by magic. It just appeared. So I'll show you how I did it on the index finger. Now I'm back in the saddle and stuff like that. It's, yeah, the first time I did a French after having so long off, I was like, oh, what's going on? I don't like this. But now I'm fine. <laughs> fine again. It's muscle memory. So I do a line either side, a line across the middle, and then I use it. And that's because for me, and this is the same for a lot of people, I work better right, because I'm right-handed dominant, I work better on the right hand of the nail than I do on the left hand of the left side of the nail. So when I go to join my smile lines up, I struggle with um, the left side. I've also had this thing, and it's happening a lot lately. Um, I should probably like go and get my eyes tested or something, but my eyes keep shaking. They keep going when I'm trying to concentrate on stuff. And um, like I've had it a few times in my life, but I actually got it a lot doing this set. And I, I remember on my last eye test, which was years ago, uh, I, they said I've got astigmatism. So I'm wondering if that's a bit worse or something, or if I need my glasses changing because my eyes were wobbling. I mean, they were like raving while I was trying to do this uh, set, which was quite funny. It just means I got to be more patient and take breaks, um, which is fine because I like a cup of tea. So bring on the decaf. Okay. So I've done that in one coat because I applied a velvet matte base coat. Well, a top coat as my base. Then I'm going in with a teeny tiny weeny weeny bit of base coat because it's got a tacky layer. And I'm going in with that purple haze glitter. And I'm just going to use my application brush and take a tiny bit on the end and just tap, tap, tap. Just to give a sparkle and then tie in all the nails so all the nails have an element of the pink all the nails have an element of the glitter well bar the pink one that's going to have freehand all over it but it all ties in then the colors flow throughout you see what i mean see what i did there you see what i did there i've got an amazing halloween glitter from smiley's glitter store that when i because i don't have my nail instagram anymore um, mainly because i passed it on to our company so because I thought I would never be able to do nails again and I kind of just went that's it I'm done because I was so unwell but here I am and now I've not got my Instagram which is gutting but I do have a TikTok uh, which I'll link I keep forgetting to do it um but I forgot where I was going with this where was I going oh yeah I did when I had Instagram this glitter I used from Smiley's Glitter Store uh, I'm gonna coat it in matte top coat all over now um was like my first viral vid on Instagram. And that's what led to my account just going, woohoo. Um, and I can't remember what I did. I think I did like a purple and orange set. I'm sure I did. I might have to try and recreate it if I can find it. Right, I'm using the gel paint kit from Madam Glam. This kit is insane and it will last you a lifetime. I kid you not. Absolutely kid you not. And you can mix colors out of all these primary colors. Like you just, it's a no wipe as well. So I'm gonna use the purple the white and the black for this set and I'm going to use the purple and white to mix a very light purple this is the consistency it's quite thick but when you get into it it's easily spreadable it doesn't go all over the place so I'm going to use my let me check which brush I'm using hang on it's in my drawer here I'm literally mapping it out as I go with a really tiny bit of the black gel paint on my brush oh did I put it back in my case right I've put it back in my case so I'm literally just mapping with my head nothing too severe line wise it's just getting the gist of it here it is this is the long fine liner and she is tiny so as I was getting excited about my brush I actually hit the button on the microphone and turned it off <laughs> yes yeah, the long fine liner from Madame Glam it is fine it is really good for this kind of work I've sped this up a lot and um because I'm slow, really slow with freehand. And uh, I've also sort of jumped the main part, which is coloring in. I'm drawing a cauldron. I'll put the picture in the right hand corner for reference so you guys can see what I'm aiming to achieve here. But um, I wanted the cauldron in the center of the nail because it's quite chunky. 
um, with the bubbles coming out of the top and then a little ghosty in the bottom of the nail and at the top of the nail peeping out almost that was my i would have tried to put it all on if i could but you know that's the downside to a stiletto nail you have less space to work on so i'm just placing things now for reference getting a gist of how i want it to look and then I'm going to start filling it in. I'm still going to use the long fine liner because um, I get a really good coverage with these thin brushes. You wouldn't think it. You would think, oh, use the applicator brush. No, 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 because the applicator brush is so firm, it smooshes the gel out. So I'm much better using a, a finer brush. These, these gel paints are specially designed for this kind of work. They hold their own. You only need one coat. doesn't matter what color you're painting over. There you go. In the lamp she goes for a minute. And then I am doing the little handles either side of the cauldron. And I will throughout, once I get, once I'm happy with a section, I will flash cure it. Okie dokie. Let's get that in the lamp. And now I'm going to start working on the bubbles. So I'm using the purple colour that I mixed the, with the purple and white and I'm just using my dotting tool to make bubbles as if they are appearing out of the cauldron and then I'll use my long fine liner just to tidy it up and extend it around and join it to the top of the cauldron um, and just sort of finish it off really. There's not a lot to do apart from neaten it up around the edges then I'll cure that. Obviously I'm just going to add a little bit more shape to it because we want it kind of looking like it's spilling out. Right, so that's cured. And what did I do next? Oh yeah, the center of the cauldron. So one dot using that same color that I mixed. So it just shows you how easy it is to mix colors using the gel paints. If you, if you don't have like the detail in gel paints, if you get the Madame Glam set, it's the only one you will need. Because there's metallic silver and gold in there as well. You won't need to buy anything else. And you can save 30% with my code. So I will put that in the description box. Don't miss out on that saving though, because it is a chunk of money and it will really help you. I'm just copying the design on here. I've got a little bit of white gel on my paintbrush. And I am, these, this made my eyes go funny. It's so small. I was trying to add some 3D definition to the bubbles. But my God, they're so tiny that, um, you know, I'm zoomed in here quite a lot. But if you look at how far away I was from the nails, I need some sort of like device to pull in like scientists have, <laughs> like a magnifying machine. Um, but I'm trying to give definition to the bubbles and create that sense of like them erupting out of the cauldron. Um, so I'm using white to go in with the long fine liner. And then I'm trying to make sure there's no big bubbles of gel paint on the end of my brush. That's why I'm adding a... a adding it and taking it off on my thumb. Once I've done this, I will quickly cure that. And then I mixed a white down a little bit finer. Um, I think I just spread it out using my application brush so that I had these tiny, tiny weeny amounts of white pigment within the brush, but not like the white paint fully on there because I needed to give a little bit more definition and and um light and shade to the bubbles so once that was cured i went in and just literally tapped at it with my brush there's really not much pigment on the brush just a tiny weeny weeny amount because it's really strong really strong really pigmented you know what i mean and then i remembered that bit cured that now i'm going to do the ghost i'm using the white gel paint starting it with my dotting tool so i can place where i want the top of his head and then I just um, used my brush to spread out that paint because it, it's, there's a lot of it, but it's really pigmented so you can spread it. And I kind of wanted him peeping out from the side of the nail and then peeping out at the top of the nail. That was the plan. Um, they're so cute. So cute. But as you can see, this even the white on a on a nice bright pink, it covers really nicely. So it's not like you have to do multiple coats. You can keep it nice and thin, which is helpful. Because the hardest part, I think, with like uh, freehand nail art is keeping it non bumpy. It's like having that smooth surface still looking really nice. I was really happy with how these turned out. 
these little ghosties. So cute. All right, so that's him. We'll get him in the lamp quickly. And then I've pulled the nail down to do the one at the top because I don't want to get gel paint everywhere just in case. If I have a wobble, which is likely. Um, and again, he's just peeping out the side of the nail. Well, it might be a she, I don't know. I didn't ask the gender of the ghosts. The ghost itself is peeping out of the nail. And I'm just trying my best to uh, make it look nice and neat. Again, I'm just using the same brush to fill it. I don't need to change brushes. The gel paint goes a long way, so you don't need loads of it either. So honestly, everyone rings me when I'm doing voiceovers. Just had another phone call. Um, when I'm happy with my little ghosties, I will do a full cure for one minute. They don't have a tacky layer. Um, however, I always top coat them because, well, I, I want to seal in my design. And then I'm going to do the eyes. I'm using my teeny tiniest dotting tool. Look at that. And the little open mouth. Oh my God. They just come to life, don't they? And they just come to life. So cute. So, so cute. This one's a bit bigger, so he's got a bit of a bigger mouth. Um, in again for another cure. And then I've put a dot on the left hand side there, which I don't know why it's not showing you that part, but never mind. And I'm just going to do a little star and some little dots and stars around just to fill the gaps and continue the design throughout the whole nail. So you've not just got like splodge, there's a design. Splodge, there's a design. You've got the whole nail as a theme. Um, little dots are a great filler for any design. Now I'm just about to cut back into the original audio because I was trying to keep this set away from Mr. B so that he, I could have a blind reaction, but he kept trying to peek. So I kept the audio in because, well, it's hilarious. I'm just going to get a little bit of this. No, you're not looking. Oh, no, nope. no, I'm not going to show you until it's all done. Why? Because I want you to see the whole thing. Come on. Because you know I, no, you know I struggle with freehand and I've tried my absolute bestest. You're trying to impress me. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want you to see until okay. it's finished. And then I will get your real time response. Okay. Bugger off. I can see you lingering. I just stood there. Right. Velvet matte top coat. Don't even look. I know what you're doing. You're. No. Because. No. I <laughs> Don't look. Go away. In another room. Go in another room, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I did manage to keep it a secret. Um, velvet matte top coat going on. I wanted a matte nail. I just think it looked really nice, really, really nice. So that will be cured in the lamp. And again, he was trying to get a sneaky peek. There's my pumpkin that I made out of 4D gel. I didn't know how it would turn out, so I didn't do it on camera. I'm also using some Golden Shadow Alina crystals. I think they were Golden Shadow or Golden Shimmer, something like that, can't remember the name. Um, I'm gonna attach my pumpkin. I made sure she had a flat bottom, because I what I did was I took a Glitter Planet form and I popped that on a little piece of cardboard and I got that tip from Long Hair Pretty Nails when she was making some 4D gel stuff. And I was like, oh, that's such a good idea. So I didn't know I'd be able to make a pumpkin. I've never used 4D gel before, but I, I did make a pumpkin. So I was like, well, it's going on the nail. It's It's got to be part of it. Yes, it's pink. That's because it's a pink set. And what's all around the pumpkin is crystals because this is a crystal pumpkin patch where all the best witches go. Because if you want a pumpkin, you want some crystals as well. You've got to heal that soul. You've got to cleanse those chakras. Okay, girlies? So let's get some bling on this thing. Don't she look good? I'm going to continue this down the nail because hello, <laughs> it's bling. So once I've added these little round flat backs, I will add a nice big fat one and go in with some ABs as well because we all love an AB crystal, do we not? Yes, we do. Of course we do. Of course we do. There she goes. I'm just using McCart's adhesive. I find it really, really good. It's working for me. I like it. Oh, hello. She's slipping about a bit. There we go. Tap her into place and she'll stick. Lovely. And then I'm just going to go down the nail. 
and apply the crystals going down in size so like eight six four something like that i can't remember ten eight six four i think it was i can't quite remember the exact size there we are and then i shall add a crystal cuff to the pinky and the next finger i'll just show you the pinky quickly and then it was top coat I will show you the top coat. Um, obviously, I can't remember if I've already done the... Yeah, I've already done the freehand painted nail. I've already top coated that. So I just need to top coat the index finger, middle finger and pinky finger. I started filming putting the crystals and I was like, I've already done one now. You don't need to see another one. So we're going in with Madame Glam's No Wipe Gloss Top Coat. This is super duper glossy. And I can guarantee because I used it on all my clients in the salon and I use it on myself that it does not dull. It just doesn't. It, they'll still be, their nails could be really grown out. They could have chipped all their crystals off, but their top coat will still be shining. <laughs> I'm using a detailer brush just to go around the crystals because I'm not being a lazy bitch today. I thought, all right, all right, then I will do it. I will do the whole shebang. Um, so yes, top coat and then cure. It's a bit hard to see the pinky on this one. Obviously there is a lot to go around. So I'll do the biggest bits that I can with my brush. I will not ever go over the crystals. Never, never in a million years. Um, I will go around them and seal them in. And this is what will stop if you did something like this on a client by going around with a detailer brush and taking the time to seal in those crystal edges, that is what prevents them from catching on hair and things like that. That was the one thing people would say to me, oh, but if I have crystals, they'll get stuck in my hair. No, they won't. No, they won't. Not if they are properly sealed. So once they're sealed in, it's like, bam, they're there. In with the top coat on the index finger. That's pretty. I like the little glitter shimmer at the tip there. It's just a little gentle ombre. It's not really full on like, boom. It's more just to tie it all in. Again, getting that detailer brush and going around those crystals as much as possible to seal them in. And then they are in the lamp for their final cure. And here's Mr. B's reaction. Okay, you ready? What do you think? <laughs> Not bad at all, is it? I hand painted Paint. that, look. That's really good. And I made a pumpkin. And he's in a crystal patch because they're magical pumpkins. Pumpkin's not orange. No, no, pink pumpkin, crystal patch, magic pumpkin. Okay, cool. The, I dig it. The world of bling and shimmer. But yeah, that I was inspired by our candle. Very good. So that design's on our on a tube candle and I was like oh, I really like, I do that. like those little ghosts. They're cute aren't they? Yeah. Cauldron's good as well. well done. That was really hard. I like the bubbles. Thank you. <laughs> Mr B's the arty one as well so if he says he likes it I'm happy. So there you go the most critical man on the planet said it's really good um, and I'm happy about that. I hope you've enjoyed this set. Let me know in the comments what you think about them. Let me know what your favourite nail was. And if you've got any other things you'd like me to take inspiration from, because apparently um, and a candy apple smelling tube candle is what spiked my brain this time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.